it's 8 a.m. and I'm back. Sorry I missed you guys for a couple days there, but I uh, had a lot going on. Was off at the Bar M Ranch with no uh, internet service, and that was a blessing to say the least. But we have made it into John 16. We have made it, and uh, this will probably be a few more days of our studying together. Um, <laughs> and so let's open up and look. I had to remember where we were at today. John 16, verse 1 says, These things I have spoken to you, that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time will come that whoever kills you will think that he offers God service. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. Man, let's pray. How about that for once, huh? Lord God, I pray that you would speak to us from your word and according to your word, and you would bless us by your word, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, so, you know, Jesus has a message for the apostles, and even with all the craziness in America right now, we're not facing what they faced. Even with the craziness in America and California and Washington and Oregon, right now, we're not facing what our brothers and sisters in the Middle East face. You know, I don't want to speak lightly of some of the stuff that's being happening right now and the crackdowns from the government on churches and all this and that, but we don't know what persecution really looks like. And if you've heard the stories of fathers watching their sons tortured before their eyes, killed in front of them, being asked to deny Jesus, it makes masks and Sunday services and singing in church seem kind of petty. All important things. But the apostles face things that we aren't going to face, probably. Maybe we will. Maybe the rapture will come and we'll miss some big persecution and people who are going to go through the tribulation are going to experience it. But regardless of what they face and what you face, we all are going to face stuff. We're going to face stuff. I don't want to pause right here and say, hey, click the share button because someone else needs to hear this today. It takes you two seconds and maybe you'll bless a friend of yours who doesn't normally get in the word of God. But he says he spoke of these things that we would not be made to stumble. You see, stumbling happens to me every day. Every day I find myself not walking on the path of righteousness, walking in the spirit with all of my steps firmly planted in the place they ought to fall. You see, often I make mistakes, I get in my flesh, I get frustrated, I get disappointed, and yet if my hope and my satisfaction comes from an unchanging God, there's never a reason for disappointment to hit me. There's this aspect of his sovereignty and his omnipotence where I should know that everything that's going on is within his will for me and that I can see all things work to the good if I just continue in his love. But I have to embrace that. And so how do I do it? Well, it's these things I've spoken to you. You see, the word of God, how many reminders are there in the word of God about you having no need to fear? How many reminders are there in the word of God that he is our refuge. He's our strong tower. You know, we forget these things, but like, you know, strong towers back then. You know, it just, I don't know. I just, I have to put my mind into the time when these words were written in the time of David, where, you know, you've got a sword, you got some sticks, maybe you got a horse, you know, but someone's in a big stone building. What are you going to do? You know, and you try and batter lamb them, they throw a rock on your head. I mean, a strong tower was a big deal. Those towers made a huge difference in fortification. And we see uh, in those stories of, was it Ahimelech who got killed by the tower? No, Abimelech, the son of, uh, of Gideon. And then uh, we see it with um, Uz uh, Uzzah, Uzziah, the uh, husband of Bathsheba, Uriah. There we go. I'm waking up. I was doing a leg workout on my brain's fried. Uriah, you know, they Joab sends him up to a tower and they talk about the, why did he go against the tower? What moron would attack a tower? God is our strong tower. And that's the thing is we need to remember that. But he's spoken these things, all these promises, all this guidance, all this direction, all these exhortations. They're written to us that we may not stumble. 
They're written to us so that when the hard times come, we'll know how to handle it. Here's Benaiah, one of the mighty men. Give me a muscle flex, Benaiah. You're on the camera right there, buddy. <laughs> but it says, so these guys, what were they going to face? They were going to be put out of the synagogues. Well, golly be. <laughs> put out of church? When would that ever happen? No, we no one's ever going to kick us out of the building. And yet, what's the big deal? We're going to keep doing church one way or another. Whether we go back, whether we're outside, no matter what. I mean, we find a way. And we shouldn't be shaken. We shouldn't be stumbled over this. We shouldn't be freaking out. Because guess what? He's written everything we need in this book. We have all the things that pertain to life and godliness, Peter says. Everything spiritual and physical. And so he says, but these things I've told you, that when the time comes, you remember that I told you of them. And now see, how many of us are facing a trial right now? Hard times in marriage, hard times in parenting, hard times in job, hard times in, in health. But is there not a promise for that? Is the Bible, does it not contain something that pertains to your life right now? A promise that applies to you, where you're at, what you're facing. Well, he says, these things I've told you that when the time comes, you remember that I told you. Man, the, the Bible says when persecution comes, when trials come, not if, when. He promised these things are going to happen. He promised that, that if they hated him, they would hate you too. That if you decide to go all in for Christ, that family and friends might not understand you. That when you decide to hold fast on the old path and the good way, and your friends decide to deviate, that they're not going to like it, that you're staying on the path and you're telling them to get back on the path. But Jesus has already told us these things, that when it comes, you shouldn't stumble you shouldn't be upset and worried. And he tells the apostles, hey, I didn't tell you these things at the beginning because I was with you. And you, know, you think about it, so often I feel like, you know, there's the stuff that I tell newer believers, and I try not to overwhelm them. I think one of the zealous mistakes of younger believers is they want to blast people with every ounce of truth that they know. But some stuff only comes through experience and time, and some messages people aren't quite ready for until later on, you know, when I see someone get saved, and I mean really saved, the first thing I do, do is just tell them, now you're going to get persecuted, hated, and bad times are coming and trials are coming. Now we're going to build them up in God's word. We're going to build them up with these promises and with these truths because the time will come when they might find themselves more independent, walking on their own. Was there a time maybe when you had more peers in the Lord where it felt like there was all these people that you were learning and growing with but now maybe you're more on your own you're more by yourself but you've got these promises you've got the words of Jesus you have these things to keep you going so that when the trials come when the hard times come when things you face come that you should not be stumbled you've got these promises so go with it roll with it and just continue doing those things that we've been taught since the beginning Right, Benny? Look at Daddy. I know. What do you see? Is that Grandpa? That says Grandpa right there. There's Diane. You see Diane? Say hi to Diane. Hi, Diane. There you go. All right. So, he's written these things to give us direction, to give us guidance. Understand that all these warnings are going to apply to you. All these promises, they apply to you. Give me that one, too. I'm just going to get piled up with kids this morning. So, whoa, here's another one. <laughs> and here's another one. I wonder where the other guy is. Anyway, so, God loves you like I love these little kids. And he's going to teach you just like I teach these little kids. And there's going to be times when you're going to face a lot of stuff. Like one day these kids are going to be facing stuff. And hopefully they'll remember what I told them. And so that they will not stumble and they will remain strong. So... Go read maybe 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. Little children, I've written these things that your joy may be full. I know. You see the people? 
I've written these things that you may not see. And I have no greater joy than to know that my children walk in truth. Right? Hey, Hannah, can you say bye-bye? Say bye-bye. Oh, she can do it. Say bye-bye, baby. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. She was talking up a storm last night, saying bye-bye to everyone. All right. Bye-bye. We love you guys. See you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye, Hannah. Bye-bye. Oh, I'm in the